Turning now to the latest developments in the ongoing war in Ukraine, Russian forces are pounding the country's second largest city of Kharkiv. So Chris Livesay is joining me now with more on this. Chris, uh, you are in Kiev now, but you were in Kharkiv this morning. What's happening there? Are, are these attacks expected to intensify? Uh, yeah, they are, Anne-Marie. In fact, we spoke to the regional commander there who said things are indeed intensifying. We saw it ourselves for the about a week that we were there, the amount of, of missile fire and rocket fire on the city of Kharkiv, it not only increased in the amount, but it, it got closer and closer to the urban area where we were staying. In fact, one night, several nights in a row, actually, I could see missile fire uh, being lobbed right over our, our hotel uh, and then hearing the booms about a, a minute later uh, after each missile was fired. The regional commander said it's for a couple of reasons. First, because it's all part of their invasion of the Donbass. So where Kharkiv is located in the northeast, if they're able to push through that city, first of all, it's a great trophy because it's the second largest city in Ukraine. Uh, and second of all, it would help them cut off Ukraine's forces that are fighting in the Donbass, which is now Russia's primary objective. The other main reason is, according to President Volodymyr Zelensky, who notes that it's this week that the European Union is deciding on Ukraine's candidacy to join. So uh, Vladimir Putin and his uh, military could be calculating that any disruption in the war or any reason to give other EU members reason to pause could uh, diminish their chances of joining the European Union uh, and leave Ukraine more isolated. And in some ways, Russia is being disrupted. Uh, Lithuania, a member of NATO, blocked some Russian rail shipments of sanctioned goods traveling into the Russian enclave of Kaliningrad. What has the response been from Moscow on that? Right. Well, this is actually a really interesting tale as to why Ukraine is trying to join uh, the European Union, for instance. Uh, so what happened is the European Union has put sanctions on uh, a lot of Russian goods. Uh, Lithuania is enforcing those sanctions by not allowing some of this freight to pass through its territory into Kaliningrad, which is this exclave of Russia's between Lithuania and Poland. This has really infuriated uh, Russia and said there are going to be, quote, serious consequences for for the people of Lithuania. But Lithuania points out, look, we're just enforcing European law right now. The European Union is completely backing up uh, Lithuania. And so is NATO, because Lithuania is also a member of NATO and, and the United States. The, the State Department today said that its relationship with Lithuania uh, and its support of NATO uh, is ironclad. So Lithuania is a tiny country. It's got fewer than three million people. So it's a lot smaller than Russia, but it's definitely not alone. Um, what about these Americans that have been captured? Do we have an update on what's going on with them? Sure. So more and more sources, uh, media sources in uh, Donetsk, which is half of the Donbass region, are saying that they have those two Americans in their custody right now. Russia itself has been very cagey, not saying exactly where those those two men are. In one of the interrogation videos that were released online and on, on Russian outlets, one of the interrogators at some point says, quote, here in Donetsk. So these things have to be taken with a grain of salt. Uh, that is, of course, an interrogation video. And the fact that it was released is by itself uh, a form of propaganda. Um, but if it's true, the implications are ominous because there are already three foreign fighters that have been captured in the Donetsk area, two from Britain, one from Morocco. They've already been convicted and sentenced to death for fighting alongside the Ukrainians. So it seems like there's already a precedent in place for these two Americans if they're in Donetsk and if they're tried and sentenced with the same outcome. Now, the U.S. Ha has, has spoken out against uh, this, of course. Um, uh, the the uh, press secretary for Vladimir Putin has said that he cannot rule out the death sentence for these two Americans, to which the United States has said it's appalling that uh, world leaders would speak in such tones. Um, so, But it remains to be seen. They could wind up being pawns in this greater geopolitical battle. Right Right now, um, all we can do is wait and see. So many angles uh, to this ongoing conflict to follow there in Ukraine. Chris Livesay uh, reporting for us in Kyiv. Thank you. Thank you.